Welcome to electron line. So now let's explore the possible values the energy of the particle can have inside region 2, inside that finite potential well. In the previous video, we found that the general solution for the particle inside region 2 between x equals 0 and x equals L is defined by this equation right here. Now we also realized from the previous video that the function in here, region 2, is such, it's going to be a sine or a cosine function, in such a way that the length or the width of this, this portion of, or region 2 should equal a half a wavelength or a full wavelength or one and a half a wavelength and so forth because that's the only way that the function format inside region 2 can match up what it looks like in region 1 and region 3 because we realize that in a finite potential well the particle can reside to a small extent inside these two barriers on either side as long as the barriers are not infinite in, in the energy. And so to do that, we can then say that we can take the argument of the sine or the cosine and set that equal to either 1 pi or 2 pi or 3 pi, so forth. But in other words, the only way that the functions can match up is if the argument of the sine and the cosine when x equals L has to be equal to either 1 pi or 2 pi or 3 pi or 4 pi because that's the only way that the function that's going to be a sinusoidal function in region 2 can match up with an exponential decaying function in region 1 and region 3, which necessitates that the square root of 2me divided by h bar times l when x equals l must equal 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, or n times pi. And so we then have various values for e. So we have e1, when we plug in e1 in the equation, we can set it equal to 1 pi. When we have e2, we can set it equal to 2 pi. When we have e3, we can set it equal to 3 pi, and so forth. And in the end, the general equation that looks like, if we then say we have a number of energy possibilities for the particle inside region 2, let's call them e sub n, we can then set this argument, when we multiply this times L, for x equals L, we can set equal to n times pi. And those are then all the possible values that the energy of the particle can have inside region 2. When we now square both sides and solve this equation for E sub n, we then see that E sub n is equal to n squared times pi squared times h bar squared divided by 2m times L squared, m being the mass of the particle, L being the length of the finite well, and h bar, of course, is Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. And so now we have very distinct values that the energy of the particle can have inside region 2, which is defined by the, by the uh, mass of the particle, by the length of the well, and so that will then give us these very specific forms of the sinusoidal equations inside region 2 that can then match up with the exponential decaying functions in region 1 and region 3. So by necessity, these are the only values that the particle can have in terms of energy inside region 2.